Okay, it's 8.45 on a Friday morning. I took the day off and today we're going to put in the uh, Sanyo ductless system that I got from AJ Madison, ordered it offline. And uh, we're going to install it in the master bedroom. So it's going to be cooling probably about, oh, 30, 350 square feet or so, something along those lines. We're going to mount it right there above that wall and uh, put the outside unit outside. Just some advice whenever you're building a house, take as many photos as you possibly can. You can never take too many. Um, the photo you're looking at here is a picture of this wall before uh, at the framing stage. So it's before any electrical, drywall, brick, anything else was applied to that, to that wall. So what we're looking at here is this window opening. And if you can see above that window, um, we know exactly where our studs are going to be, so all we've got to do is find a, a reference point on the wall up there, and we'll know exactly where to cut our hole and where we're safe to, uh, to mount this unit to a stud. Okay, I've got the uh, inside unit laying upside down on, the, uh, on this chair here, and this is the actual mounting bracket that's going to go on the wall. And um, I'm going to do just this installation that's going to require the, the, the recommended installation, I believe, is on the, the right side. So we're coming straight out the back on the right. And um, you see these two tabs right here. One there, there's, a, there's an arrow. So the hole needs to be three inches dead center right there. Uh, so essentially the hole would be right here. And the uh, it's a drain tube. This is your... Uh, high and low sides off your uh, air conditioning or for the refrigerant rather and uh, we're going to come and take those right out right here and of course the power is going to come in as well and the power will come in on this side right here so what we're going to do now is we're going to take this bracket reverse it around and then put this up on the wall right up there and then drill our holes correspond with those two or our, our big hole or three three inch hole to correspond with that and we're going to take some PVC pipe and sleeve it and uh, and go outside with it now what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to take a nail and a hammer and just manually find the edge of those studs up there uh, I could use a stud finder but I think since this is going to be covered up a little hole in the wall is not going to be it's not going to make a difference either way if you can see there's a challenge here I'm going to need to get that rear hole drilled in such a way that uh, it's not gonna not gonna hit one of those studs. So I'm probably going to have to uh, offset this unit a little bit. It's not gonna be perfectly centered up up above that window. Okay, what I did was I uh, split the difference on this window here, and uh, then also split the difference between the. Uh, the crown molding in the top of the window casing and got myself a point and then went off of that and plumbed it out straight up and down and left and right and uh, that's going to be my guide so now we're going to take the mounting bracket and get it centered up on there and see what our whole situation is with regard to those studs that are behind the, uh, the sheetrock here if you look at the mounting bracket uh, it's got several useful marks on it uh, primarily it's got dead center which you can see right there that uh that ridge coming down the middle there with the, with the arrow pointing down so i'm going to use that as a reference get it up there on our mark and uh, see where we go with regard to finding those studs all right now what i've done is i've uh put those markings on the wall you can see see them coming out right there um also did a a vertical mark and you can't hardly see that, but it's it's lined up right behind here. You can see that mark right in there. Then I just took some short finishing nails and uh, kind of hung it up there and, and pretty close to the right place. And then I uh, went off the markings over here. You can see the mark in there, the mark in there. What that's doing is that pointing to the, uh, the center of the hole, or the, the center spot where the hole needs to be. So there no needs to be a three inch hole cut right here uh, to pass the tubing, the drain, and the electrical wire through to run the inside unit. And our challenge is going to be is how close to that hole are the studs behind the wall. So we might have to shift everything over a little bit this way in order to accommodate it, but 
hopefully not. Well, as I suspected, if we tried to put the hole right there where it would be the perfect match, if we centered the inside unit with the window, uh, we were going to hit a stud. And uh, we'll look at that in the drawing a little bit. So what I did was I did a redneck stud finder over and, and got the edge of this stud right here. And then uh, went over this way to find the, the other stud that's in that wall. And then the, uh, the header above the window is right here. So this is our this is our sweet spot right here that we'll be able to put the uh, hole into the outside wall. And to correspond with that, you can look right here. That's what we're contending with right there. And that little hole is where we're going to try to go through. So that's going to make the inside unit offset by about um, four inches. So it'll be offset from, uh, this is perfect center for the inside unit. It's going to be offset to the left side about four inches, which for some of my anal retentive friends, it's going to drive them crazy. But for me, I don't frankly give a shit. Okay, so it's just a dry run on the unit. That's what it's going to look like up there. It's, going to, it's certainly not perfectly centered above those, that window, but considering the situation with the studs behind the wall, and the hurricane strapping, it's really the best we're going to get. And I certainly could have put it on that wall or that wall or on this wall. And I just think that at least it's close as it can possibly be to being centered in the room. So that's what we're going with. Okay, it's 10.04. We've been at this for probably about an hour now. An hour and 15, 20 minutes. So we got the mounting plate up. We've got our hole drilled um, all the way through to the outside wall. Hopefully in the perfect sweet spot. Right up next to the stud. This is what we use right here to go into the uh, go out through the outside wall. It's just a Hitachi uh, hammer drill. with uh, It's probably about a 10 or 12 inch bit on it masonry bit made a nice little hole at the angle that we're supposed to make it out so now we're going to uh, make the hole inside the right size using various things and then we're going to go outside and uh, and get that hole as big as it needs to be to put the PVC pipe through what I did just to get the hole started was I went ahead and um, just took a this is the biggest hole saw I had so it's like a two inch one and uh, got that neat little hole right up there what I'm going to do is clean that insulation out and I'm going to uh, mark that hole at about three and a half. Because the flange we're going to put in there is going to be, um, you know, a little bit oversized. So that should be just fine. And then we're going to fill that uh, cavity around that conduit with uh, probably some spray in foam that will set up in there really good and hold it in. Everything should be just fine. So there you have it. Here's our wall before we get started on the outside. I'm going to go ahead and put the brackets up because the electricians are on their way over. They're going to run my power out. And uh, I'll run the wires right up there. If you see that, right there, that's where the bit came in on the back wall. So we're going to need to uh, run everything over, bring it down. We're going to mount the unit right above that uh, emergency generator input right there. Um, shouldn't be a problem because that wire runs straight up the wall. Okay, here's where we are. Got this mounted. I went ahead and put all three bolts in. Didn't find a stud behind it though. That's what I was hoping for. So we could just use a long lag bolt. But uh, went in fairly easy. What we're going to do is we're going to measure over appropriate length and we're going to put one over here and uh, get those cross members on. All these bolts, if you use the the ones that ship with this mounting bracket from uh, Sanyo, they're all going to be 13 millimeter. So, a person like me who has to wrestle with that stuff with the toolbox, it's 13 millimeter. Okay, we got the second bracket on. We ended up using the uh, stock bolts um, with some lead inserts that I had from uh, another project. In fact, from a uh, large LCD flat panel uh, mount. So, kind of centered up above that box right there. Alright, we got the unit back here now. I'm going to attempt to do a one-man setup job on it. Get it up there, get it all aligned, and bolt it down. Well, there you have it. About 
less than four hours after I started. Got the inside unit up, holes almost in the wall. Got the outside unit and the bracket up, ready for my electrician, ready for my AC guy to come. Vacuum it out, charge it up, and we'll turn it on. And not a day too soon because it's already 90 degrees out here and it's not even June yet. One thing to pay particular attention to is these, uh, the way these brackets are, uh, are uh, facing. Um, it's kind of confusing if you look at it on the sheet of paper, the instruction sheet, but uh, that's the only way that it'll work. And then uh, you run it out all the, all the way as far as it'll go. It gives you about three and a half inches of clearance there, and I believe that the, uh, the recommendation is uh, at least two inches of clearance. Now one thing we're going to have to be particularly concerned about is, you see the, uh, the overhang there for the shingles, that's at 16 inches, so we're going to measure this and see exactly where it's at. Okay, here's a little trick right here to uh, allow you to move this thing around and get it adjusted just right. Just took a couple of drips of uh, dish trigger, little dish soap. I'm going to put it on all these rubber stoppers and stuff and just kind of make this thing all nice and slippery so that we can move it without much problem here. Of course, this soapy water is not going to hurt anything at all. Probably even rinse the whole unit off when we get done. Okay, just checking on this to see how far how far back it is from the drip line on the roof there. You can see that tape hanging down. And it's, uh, it's a really hard rain and the wind blowing it. Most of that's going to miss the uh, Missed the unit. So the unit's completely under the uh, under the eave of the house here, and I've got uh, about four inches right there, about three and a half. So we'll go. The uh, the minimum is uh, two. So we're gonna have more than ample airflow back there. And, um, get your bracket square. Well, the easiest thing to do is just to uh, try to get the same distance at both ends. And then uh, if you do that, and then you do the same thing with these back ones, um, you're going to be pretty guaranteed that you're going to have pretty close to square bracket out here. This thing's extremely sturdy, not going to go anywhere. One thing to pay attention to is the way that these rubber mounts go. You have to turn that bottom part at a 90 degree angle to the, uh, to the cut in the bracket. That does is hold it in place, and it's got a uh, built-in nut. So you just tighten that down, and make sure that you get your feet exactly in the right place. You want this to go straight down, not angled or anything like that. Fairly easy to do; just takes a little bit of time, um, and then you're good to go. All righty, that's what it looks like right there. The guys are here to do the electrical, and uh, cut a big hole in the wall. Took about two hours to do it, by far the hardest part of this whole project. Okay, we got a lot done yesterday. I'm gonna finish it up today, hopefully, if my AC guy comes by. Got the hole knocked in the side of the wall, got a three inch PVC pipe, sewer pipe put in there, so it's the light stuff. And got the tubing coming out, the drain, and the power's already hooked up. Electricians came by. The way we did this is, since this is a 110 volt unit, we just came off of an inside outlet, drilled through the back of the outlet, and put one of these new uh, one of these new deals here, which is this one's built to code, so it's pretty tough. And we're just gonna run the wire like this to the bottom. Of course, I'm gonna get some nice sleeving to go around it, make it look good, and clamp it to the wall. And then the same thing with this, I'm gonna clamp that up really good. So. Hopefully within a couple of hours we're going to be cooling it inside. Okay, my AC guy just left and we got the uh, system charged up, tubes ran, and I ordered the 15 foot tubes which are the shortest ones that you can get. You know, we probably are only using about 7 feet there, 6 feet maybe. And there's the unit. And it is running. Barely hear it bit of a trick to getting it started. You've got to go into test mode with the remote controller. So we're going to go ahead and get 
proper conduit and everything for these wires, make them look real nice. And uh, you can really see that it's working because it is getting a lot of moisture out of this Florida air. It's about 92 degrees outside and I'm going to try to jack it down as far as it will go inside and let it run for a few hours. So there you have it. Okay, here's the inside unit. It's been running for about oh, 20 hours or so now. Eh, maybe maybe 18 hours. And last night we set it for 64 degrees. Well, there you can see it right there. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, trust me, it's 64 degrees in here. And uh, very quiet. Right now we got on fast speed fan just for sleeping. I like to sleep with the fan on. But it's great so far. One thing that I found to be very annoying is this light right here. I've got it covered up with some painter's tape, but um, yeah, I mean, it's very bright. And if you like to sleep in the dark, it will definitely light up the entire room with this green tint and uh, annoy people who like total darkness. So I don't know if there's a way to turn that off or not, but I'm certainly going to research it and try to find out. Otherwise, we're just going to have to permanently tape over them. Okay, we're doing the uh, Honda generator test. We got a 2KW, 2000 watt Honda generator, um, and it's running the wall unit right now, or the split unit. And I've got several fans and some lights on in the house, uh, computers running, network gear, those kind of things. So, and uh, we'll walk outside and take a look at that generator and see how much it's revving up or how much it's not. Oh, yeah, I think that's working out pretty good. Shoot that shot. Smile for the camera there, Veronica. We all love you, baby. <laughs> this is the test hurricane mode. Of course, I'd have this up on blocks, have the uh, wiring secured and everything, but this is about 30 feet away from the uh, bedroom window. As you can tell it's not very loud at all. You're running the outside unit quite nicely. No problems. Just to show you how cold it is. Ice in the water bowl, see. Oh, I see it now. I see. Okay, it's been about six months since I put the uh, outside unit in, and uh, really cold day in Pensacola for Pensacola standards. It's about 24 degrees outside, so you know it's pretty close to a hard freeze last night. And I'm gonna walk outside and take a look at that outside unit and see how it's doing. Here's the head unit right here, and it's kicking out nice, warm, very dry air at about 80 degrees or so, and it's just uh, works great. Cools or heats the room up real fast, and you really only need to turn it on uh, right before you get out of bed, and you're good to go.